Good morning. My name is Junjun Li. I'm a PhD candidate at Waseda University, Japan. My research field is the role of innovation in economic growth and national innovation system in ICT. Today, I will present a paper titled as the Direction of Technical Change, the Theoretical Research and the Empirical Research on the Chinese Economy. Recent theories and data show that the long-run trend of a merger economy grows with only labor augmenting technical change, and the labor share have fallen in recent decades. I wonder that whether labor augmenting technical change is more critical to economic growth, whether technical change is also biased toward labor saving innovation in China. This research studies the direction of technical change and the economic growth and empirically investigate the direction of technical change in China. This presentation includes the background, related literatures, the theoretical study on technical change direction, then the empirical analysis and conclusions. Induced innovation is a hypothesis first proposed by Hicks. He argues that a change in the relative prices of production factors is a spur to invention, a directed invention that will develop technologies to economize on the relative expensive production factor. In China, with the growth of the economy, the level of productivity is improving. Meanwhile, the development of education has rapidly increased its human capital stock. This figure shows that from 2008 to 2017, average real wages doubled in China. The labor cost advantage in China has vanished. The caudal stylized effects for long-term economic growth indicates that functional distribution of income is roughly constant. However, the labor income share in 35 advanced economies fell from around 54% in 1980 to 50.5% in 2014. The labor share of China, Japan, and the US has also declined. Literature show that a combination of factors has com contributed to the labor share decline. Huang and Xu argue that the key cause of labor share decline in China is labor saving technical change. This presentation addresses the following research questions. Question one, can pure labor augmenting technical change ensure steady economic growth? the growth of labor productivity. Question two, does technical change is also directed toward labor augmenting innovation in China, a developing and labor supplies economy? The existing theoretical and empirical studies are developed based on profit maximizing firms as a mongolo studies from both the demand side and the supply side for new technology. He pointed that the forces determining the direction of technical change are the price of factors, the market size, and the substi substitution effect. Ehrman points out that population aging leads to more labor augmenting technical change. He suggests that the steady state must induce sufficient capital saving technical progress. Based on the theoretical studies, several empirical studies are carried out. They find that the economic growth with the pure labor saving technical change in the long run. The contributions, in addition to profit maximization, this research they theoretically examine the direction of technical change from the perspective of labor productivity growth. 
it can make up for the shortcomings of only focusing on profit maximization. Meanwhile, there are a few studies on the economy of China. This research conducts an empirical analysis in China. To answer research question one, this study theoretically inspected the di direction of technical change through both the perspective of labor productivity growth and the perspective of profit maximization. To answer research question two, the study empirically investigates the direction of technical change in China, comparing with Japan and the US. The first part of the theoretical study is to examine the direction of technical change from the perspective of labor productivity growth. Here adopts Kennedy's innovation possibilities frontier. Delta is a proportional rate of labor augmentation technical change. Then the proportional rate of capital augmentation technical change is one minus delta. Thus, the production function in Cobb Douglas format is the equation one. Then the labor productivity is equation two. From equation two, we get growth rate of labor productivity as equation three. In equation three, one delta is less than labor output elasticity beta expanding the proportion of labor augmenting technical change, the growth rate of labor productivity will be higher. When delta is greater than beta, reducing the proportional rate of labor augmenting technical change, the growth rate of labor productivity will be higher. The proportions of labor and the capital augmenting technical change converge to labor and capital outputs elasticity, respectively. When delta is stable, the growth rate of labor productivity is equation four. In a steady state, output per worker will grow at the rate of technical change for labor output elasticity, the equation five. The second part of the theoretical study carries out from the perspective of profit maximization. Profit is the difference between value of products and the value of input factors. So the profit is equation six. Profit maximization means that marginal output equals to marginal cost. Then we get equation seven the relationship between factor price and factor output. Unit labor savings P and the unit lab capital savings Q from technical change are equation eight and nine. According to the definition of labor and capital saving technical change from Kennedy, an improvement will be labor saving, neutral or capital saving according P is greater than equal to or less than Q, then when profit is maximized, the relationship between P and Q is equation 10. In equation 10, when the price of labor increases sharply relative to the price of capital, profit maximizing firms develop labor saving technology. When the price of capital increases sharply relative to the price of labor, firms develop capital saving technology. And when the change is the same, firms develop neutral technology. It means when firm pursue profit maximization, the direction of technical change is saving factor cost. Equation 10 shows that the relative change of factor price influences the decision on technical change direction. However, equation three suggests that only one direction of technical change will decrease labor productivity. 
both profit maximization and labor productivity growth should be considered when firms choose the direction of technical change. In the empirical study, equation eight and nine is used to estimate the technical change direction in China, Japan, and the US. Equation 10 will be used in causality tests to check if the relative change of factors price decides the direction of technical change. Here list the information of all variables and data sources. All data used in this study are at constant prices to eliminate the impact of inflation. Here, the empirical estimate result. In this figure, the red line is labor savings and the blue one is capital savings. It shows that the mainstream of technical change in China, Japan, the US are labor saving technical change. In the past 40 years, unit labor savings in China is relatively stable with a slight decrease in recent years while unit capital savings have declined. In Japan, unit labor savings have declined and unit capital savings have surpassed unit labor savings in recent years. Other group seven countries, the same change has also happened in Germany, Italy, and the UK. It means that there are more capital saving technical changes in recent years in these countries. In the US, both savings are relatively stable. Together with GDP growth and capital growth, we can say that the growth of capital stock in these three countries are different. In China, it's increasing since the year of 1996. After the growth phase, dominated by labor-intensive production, the Chinese government began to strengthen fixed capital investment and take it as an essential driving force for economic growth. Driving by policy, fixed capital investment growth rapidly has exceeded the GDP growth in the recent decade, and the unit capital savings have fallen. In Japan, the growth rate of fixed capital investment declined since 1970s. It has increased slightly in recent years. The growth of fixed capital investment in the US is relatively stable. Meanwhile, the unit labor savings in China and Japan are more correlated with their GDP growth compare, comparing to that in the US. From the correlation test and the causality test result, we can say that the relative factor price change, the profit maximization is not the driven force, it mining the technical change direction in China, the growth of capital investment and average wage drive labor augmenting technical change for long run. The conclusions. From the perspective of labor productivity growth, only labor augmenting technical change will slower the growth of the economy. Both labor and capital augmenting technical change are essential to economic growth. A proper rate policy guidance is critical. When the proportion of labor augmenting technical change is low, Promoting aid will enhance economic growth. When the proportion of labor augmenting technical change is too high, it's higher than labor output elasticity, promoting capital augmenting technical change will enhance economic growth. Meanwhile, data shows that there are more capital augmenting than labor augmenting technical change in Japan as well as in Germany, Italy, 
and the UK in recent years. It means capital augmenting technical change still works. The mainstream of technical change is labor augmenting technical change in China as well. However, profit maximization is not the driven force that decide the direction of technical change. While policy-driven growth in fixed capital investment has promoted more labor augmenting technical change. In recent decades, the financial market oppressed business to take care more of stockholders and ignore stakeholders. It's very critical that both capital and labor share the results of labor productivity growth. A further study on the influence of financial markets in the direction of technical change is essential to economic growth. Here is the main references. Thank you for your attention. Your questions and the comments are welcome.